Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review on the new Transformers Retro Headmasters Autobot Chrome Dome. This toy comes from a Walmart exclusive line, or at least Walmart exclusive here in the U.S., of Titans Return Headmaster characters, given their Japanese Legends head sculpts, released in retro 1987 G1 packaging. The whole thing's a bit of an oddity, and I have some mixed thoughts on this that I want to really delve into in a separate video addressing the whole first wave. So I won't get too into all that. But some important things to know, these are not the G1 Headmaster toys. They are the Titans Return slash Legends molds. They are all in completely new decos from either Hasbro or Takara's previous offerings. But they include the Hasbro weapons and the Takara heads. Additionally, their box art has been modified to replace the original head of the character with one that resembles that included in the toy. And honestly, to very mixed effect. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this is going to go. We're going to take a look at Chrome Dome in his packaging. We'll get an in-depth look at his tech spec included on the back. And then we'll open it up, we'll see his instructions, and then we'll see Chrome Dome himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Chrome Dome, as I said, comes in a retro-styled Headmasters box. And to me, this is especially cool, because... We see the original, like, 1984-85 style packaging a lot with things like you know, retro merchandise, the vintage reissues. This is very different. This is when they took on, you know, a whole different kind of style in the G1 packaging. So, to me, this is neat. This is the first time I've personally laid eyes on this, at least that I'm old enough to remember. But it's set up almost exactly like the original packaging, which is great. Here's the aforementioned box art, and this head has been modified from the original. Now, in this case, it looks really natural, and, you know, somebody that hadn't seen the original box art would probably not realize it's been changed. Um, when we do some of the other reviews, you'll see that not all of them come out so great. You can see Chrome Dome in his vehicle mode right here. You got his weapons hanging out down there. And then you get his Headmaster. And I, I love this, right? Because it's not a Titan Master. He is a headmaster, headmaster. So they actually are using the original name and context for his little transforming head robot. Now I imagine that change only applies to this subline. Anything released outside of this in Generations, they'll probably go back to calling it Titan Masters, but maybe not. Maybe they're going to stick with Headmaster now. And you can see here, he's in his little robot mode. It's the Autobot Stylor. Up top, you get your little flap there and then you get a recreation of the original like four transformation steps from the g1 toy but this time done with you know the new mold on the side you get some shots of the toy and then on the back you get the very cool 1987 transformers you know battle mural now it may not be obvious at first glance but this packaging art has also been modified specifically for our new headmaster characters that are in this first wave Anywhere you see the robot mode, so you get Mindwipe here, Chrome Dome, Hardhead, and Brainstorm, they've all had their heads swapped out for the new style. Again, it's something like, you kind of have to squint just to see it, but they did make the changes. Probably the most noticeable is Brainstorm now having a visible mouth instead of an actual mouth plate. So all in all, very cool. I, I love seeing this stuff. I want to get these all as like prints on posters. So I don't have to save little boxes, just get all the different battle scenes. I'm sure you can buy them somewhere. Then, we'll pull this close so we can get a look at our tech specs for Chrome Dome. They're very much done up in that old G1 style, so you get this little picture of them right here. Name, different stats, you got your strength, intelligence, speed, firepower. And then you get a multilingual description, which, you know, I get why they do it, but it really kind of ruins it. Just tiny little blurbs here. So, function, computer programmer. A battle plan is only as good as its programmer. Kind of a, okay, <laughs> a little weird. Uh, spent several thousand years crunching numbers at Cybertron's Institute for Higher Programming before Decepticon attack reduced it to a pile of smoking microchips. Now, I don't think they ever actually touched on this in any of the animation or anything, 
but they kind of echoed that backstory in the IDW comics where he was at the, can't think of the name, but he was at like the Institute and the uh, Dead Universe guys came and destroyed it. So very cool. Uh, overall, I really dig the packaging. Besides, just got more pictures of the toy. And, you know, this is a really nice little treat. Especially for people that weren't able to pick up the Titans Return or Legends toys when they were out, because they go for some pretty high prices on the secondary market now. So if you didn't get those, this is a really good substitute. So now we have the instructions for Chrome Dome, and you can see they're very much done up in a classic G1 style. They're not just a reprinting of the Titans Return instructions, so I find that very, very cool. Uses the old school logo, you get kind of that little grid pattern behind the front picture of the character there. Very much stylized like the G1 reissues and all that. So let's go ahead, open this up. You get a little layout of the different parts and pieces. You get the main car, the headmaster, the two weapons. This shows you how to seat his headmaster in the weapon assembly and set it on top of the car roof. Uh, you can also just have the weapon assembly on the car roof, which they show right here. Uh, this shows you how to place his headmaster inside of the vehicle. And they spend the whole front of the instructions just kind of showing off the features. Then you get the transformation from vehicle to robot, just like the good old days, which I prefer. I always think Transformers should be packaged in their alt modes. The robot part's supposed to be kind of the surprise, you know? Shows you, you know, where to place his little headmaster and then how to get him to wield his weapons. So pretty cut and dry, but covers everything you really need to know. And now we get Chrome Dome's vehicle mode. And you can see it's in its default configuration, weapons on top, just like the old toy. And you can see Stylor hanging out inside of the uh, little cockpit or driver's seat area. And luckily the vehicle rolls very well, though I'm not really sure why. But this particular copy just is kind of a little shaky as it rolls. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. I'm not sure what it is. But I mean, I've got everything flattened out. It doesn't affect its ability to roll. It just kind of, kind of a bumpy ride. And no other version of the mold that I have does that, so... Might be something with the pin alignment on the wheels, or I'm not really sure. But it does look very nice. And if we compare it to the old Titans Return figure, you can see that they're very similar overall. Same base colors, just different shades. Now, the biggest things to point out here, the browns are kind of similar. Um, this one's got more of a... I don't know if you'd call it, like, almost a greenish quality to the brown, if that makes sense. Um, definitely a warmer tan color. This is a very pale one. And then the red's a lot darker. Uh, overall, the colors on the new toy are closer to the Generation 1 figure. However, the red on the old Titans Return one is actually a bit closer to the old red color. So, win some, you lose some. Uh, when it comes to the vehicle mode, they're not too terribly different looking. The biggest difference is that the new toy foregoes the extra brown around like the door area that kind of comes back and around the uh, back of the roof there. It just keeps it pretty much all tan. It also loses that red stripe on the back. However, it gains this really nice like copper colored paint for the rims. So instead of the rims just being plain like smoky gray, they're still smoky gray, but with color. Also, this popped off. One thing I'll point out is that for some reason, the roof-mounted gun is more likely to pop off on this copy than any of my others. I'm not sure why. You'd think it'd be pretty close, but oh well. You also see that the Autobot symbol is no longer filled in with red. It just keeps it a white border, which is fine. And then you can see the design on the hood is quite different. It's much more angular and... Kind of a more even mix of red and silver compared to the predominantly silver curved design here on the old toy. And that's really it for major differences. Here's a quick look at our chrome domes with the only other character to actually use this mold so far, and that is Titan's Return Breakaway, or as he's more traditionally known, Getaway. So you can see a very, very different color scheme on that guy. And he definitely wasn't one of the big sellers. Uh, he's a much more obscure character and I don't think his paint job's just nearly as appealing 
But it was still pretty cool that we got a getaway toy in some form because he is the first G1 getaway since the original. All right now let's remove our headmaster from the driver's seat of the vehicle. Gotta get a hold of the windshield area. Gonna carefully swing it up. It is clear plastic, so don't you know wrench on it, don't go crazy. That's what the inside looks like if you haven't seen that before. And uh, unlike most of the Titans Return toys that have a Titan Master Headmaster, this doesn't actually have a groove to like plug his little heel spurs into to hold him in place. So he's just hanging out there, flopping around a bit. That's a shame. So we get Stylor, straighten him out. And you can see he's got a little bit of paint on his face, predominantly on you know the lower face and the goggles, and it's just all orange. Which is not a lot, but it is a lot more than the Titans Return Throttle got. Because he got no paint in his robot mode. At all. And to me, I, I found that like especially egregious because Chrome Dome is arguably like the main character of Headmasters. And uh, you know, for them to just not even bother painting his Titan Master was a little silly. So you can see very different shades used. Instead of using brown for the torso, he uses the more tan color. Complete with the darker reds. And the face plates, let's look at these. Very different. The, uh, the new one, he was much closer to not just the anime look, but the actual original toy. Using two separate eyes, much more squared appearance to the face. This one is based directly off of his IDW appearance. However, uh, touch on that because the colors are not what they should be for that. So overall, you know, they are quite different looking, and I gotta say, I do very much prefer the look of this guy. Now, sadly, despite the added paint, he's still not nearly as well painted as the Legends version. Takar's version had a lot more paint on the head, and it was different colors, and just looked a lot better, a lot more realistic. And talking about lackluster, unpainted Titan Masters, here's Throttle, which is Breakaway's Titan Master, and you can see they didn't bother with him either. These poor guys just look like, I don't know, mini figs, like afterthoughts, whereas this dude looks like a fully fleshed out little character, so very much prefer the new Stylor over what came before him. Now, you take Mr. Stylor, go ahead and close this little cockpit thing back up, make sure it plugs in all the way, push it down, and now you want to take his weapons, you're going to remove the smaller gun for a moment, set it aside. We're gonna take Stylor and put him back in some sort of a driving position. This time with his feet just pointing out like he's sitting on the floor. And you're gonna put him with that little heel spur I mentioned going into this notch right here. It just kind of helps keep him in a little better. So you push it in all the way. It's not gonna flop around now, which is great. And you take the smaller gun again, and now you plug it into this post in the front. Push it down in there. All right, now it looks like he's manning this little turret. And then you can just place it right back on the roof of the vehicle, like so. So you get more of a, a Mad Max style setup where instead of driving from the driver's seat, he's up here piloting this little turret, which works really well if you have multiple Headmaster or Titan Masters. You know, if you bought some of those like little extras from the Titans Return line, you'd have one guy, you know, riding shotgun while the other one's actually driving. It's a pretty cool setup. For comparison, here's our other two mold mates with their Titan Masters or Headmasters mounted up on top. And you notice you can probably barely see them. Because <laughs> again, just flat plastic colors, they blend in with the weapon emplacement. There's very little to let you know there's something there. A little bit of paint on the faces would have gone a long way. So I think it's safe to say that in vehicle mode, the new Chrome Dome is a clear winner. I mean, he's just a much better presentation overall. Now the mold that this toy is based off of is not a new one, but Titans Return Chrome Dome came out way before I started making videos on YouTube, so you guys get treated to a transformation in this video. Lucky you, huh? So the first thing you want to do, take all the accessories, the headmaster, everything, just scoot them off to the side. We just want the vehicle mode for now. You want to lift his little canopy section up again, if you haven't. And bring it all the way up, and then you're going to fold it in on itself. 
These little pegs on the windshield are gonna plug in right here to the roof, like so. Then go ahead, take this little chest thing under the hood and flip it about halfway down, kind of out of the way. And then take the actual hood itself. It's gonna unplug from these little slots here and fold it back and then fold it about like this. You wanna make some clearance for yourself, get things out of the way. You're gonna grab his arms, untab them from the legs, fold them all the way out like so. Leave them there for a second. You're gonna take these shins, fold these out. Fold everything all the way down, straighten it out. Rotate his waist 180 and close the shins up like so. And you're gonna separate his legs like this, flip the feet down, then you can flip down his chest, flip his backpack the rest of the way down, it'll tab in like so. You need to get his fists out. The easiest way is to get a fingernail right here on this little ridge here, his knuckles, flip them out like so. Same thing here. Okay, so there's the body. And from this point, technically, you can attach any Titan Master or Headmaster that's compatible with this guy. But naturally, you want Stylor. So you take your Stylor, just put his arms into the side, bend his legs forward, and then fold them in on themselves like that in a very painful manner. Now you got the head, you just plug it in the socket, like here. Just kind of wriggle it in until it goes in there. Here you go. Then for his weapons, Default configuration is to have him hold his small little rifle here, and then the Titan Master seated gun, this other hand. And you're supposed to do it like this. Uh, personally, I kind of prefer, ooh, well, look, made his fist pop off. Yeah, these pop off pretty easily, just a warning. Doesn't really hurt anything, but carefully applied pressure as always. I like to do it like this, personally, but we'll, we'll keep it default for now. Get everything nice and straight and all right here we go and this is our chrome dome and i love the way this guy looks brown is not a very popular color when it comes to children's action figures there's a lot of market research that says like brown toys don't sell very well it's just not appealing right it's not bright and vivid like maybe a hot red sports car would be but the original run of Chrome Dome actually did sell fairly well, probably because he is a leader character and Generations, while technically kids' toys, are much more often picked up by adult collectors than, you know, different sublines of Transformers. So luckily this guy didn't have too hard a time selling, and it's a good thing because he is such a cool toy. And Titans Return, coming off the heels of Combiner Wars, really saw an uptick in the number of molds available to use, as well as, like, the quality of articulation and everything. I mean, this guy, he's full of it, right? His head is on a ball joint, which, you know, doubles as the ball joint of the headmaster's head. He's got shoulders that are ball jointed, which by today's standards is a bit outdated, but they're still nice and solid, so they can do everything you need him to. You can even lift on his shoulders a little bit if you want to get a little bit extra range of motion there. He has bicep swivel, which is awesome. Elbow bend. He does not have wrist swivel, though some of his wave mates do. Does have waist swivel. All jointed hips, thigh swivel, single bend knees, and no ankle tilt. He just has a, a kind of a molded permanent tilt. Ankle tilt really didn't become standard until the um, War for Cybertron trilogy, at least in the smaller toys. Uh, so he's most of the way there for what you'd expect for a modern toy. Now we get our comparison with the original version. And I got to say, hands down, I very much prefer the new toy. I think the colors and the color layout are just absolutely superior. I was never a fan of this very pale tan they used on the Titans Return one. I don't know, just, it never felt right. And the Titans Return toy always bugged me, especially compared to other figures released in that line. Because if you don't know, the robot's body and his head sculpt are based off of Chrome Dome's IDW appearance, specifically in the Shadow Play storyline. Now his body wasn't changed too radically from the classic G1 design, which is why many people didn't pick up on the fact that this is actually a comic-based design for the body. The head's usually more of a giveaway because he carried over this really exaggerated head design with like the single visor 
into his more than meets the eye appearance, which had a very different body type. But yeah, he is actually meant to represent one of Chrome Dome's earlier IDW forms. That being said, he kind of fails at doing that because while the sculpting is there, the colors are not. <laughs> like this toy's color layout is actually a lot closer to the IDW appearance than this one is. They changed a lot of the layout between the leg colors, the colors on the hands, which are like brown for some reason. I don't know if it was just molding requirements of the time, but you know, they really don't match. And then probably the thing that bugs me the most about him is he's got that, you know, that token IDW head that everyone recognizes as they read the comics. And he's got a blue visor, right? Which blue is the traditional eye color for Chrome Dome, but in all of IDW, he had yellow eyes. So I never could give this toy too much love because it always felt like it was trying to do two things at once and succeeding at neither of them. It's not quite a G1 Chrome Dome, especially because the head design is so radically altered. It's also not an IDW Chrome Dome because the colors are just way off. So personally, I very much prefer this new one. It just, it succeeds at being G1 Chrome Dome way better than this guy succeeds at really being anything. The only thing the Titans Return toy has on this new one in terms of G1 accuracy is again, the brighter red. This red is a bit too dark, but honestly just looks better. So. <laughs> I'm not even too upset. It looks less cheap, you know, a little more premium when you get these kind of more darker shaded plastics. So, yeah, I pretty unequivocally prefer the new one. And I think people that are more G1 purists and don't have any interest in the IDW head sculpt very much prefer this guy. You know, the plus side for having a G1 chrome dome and an IDW chrome dome, you no longer have to decide on which romantic interest to pair them with. So look at that, no more fighting between RC and Rewind over who gets to dance with Chrome Dome. Everyone's happy in the end. Aww. Now for one last little group shot, we'll bring in Breakaway, aka Getaway, once again. Just so you can see all the different takes on this mold. Again, Breakaway, he's one of those retools I'm not really fond of, where it's just a quick way to reuse a mold, but you do it for an existing character and it ends up being just very inaccurate to that character's appearance. And kind of like with the TR uh, Chrome Dome, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing because he's got a body type, which is just not his own in any incarnation, but he's got the IDW head and it's just, it's weird. <laughs> like, I'm not super crazy about either of these two. To me, this is our definitive take on Chrome Dome. I just think he does everything he's supposed to right. And even though his body is still technically based on an altered, you know, comic design, because of the color layout they use and everything, it more than passes for a G1 Chrome Dome. Very few people would look at this and be like, ah, oh, that's too different, I don't like it. So I would say, with this being the first figure I've reviewed in the first wave of the Retro Headmasters, it puts them off to a strong start. And unlike most of the Retro Headmasters, his head sculpt puts him a lot closer to the G1 toy he's supposed to be representing than the Titans Return one. The other guys, as you'll see, they actually move further away from G1 accuracy when it comes to the head sculpt because their Titans Return designs were just already pretty close as it was. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel about this guy. I've always thought this was a great mold. And now that we do get the Japanese Legends head, which can also double as the G1 toy head, I think it's just been kind of perfected. Now, because this mold is already a few years old, it's not going to have every bit of engineering quality that newer toys have that came out in the last year or two. You know, it does use ball joints, which are prone to wearing out over time and coming very loose, doesn't have the ankle tilt, all that, but it is still very poseable for something of its time. Now, whether or not it's worth the increase in price to the $20 that are, you know, it's a new standard for deluxes, I don't know. I mean, I think so. It's only a few bucks more. These uh, headmasters tend to have a bit more of a premium paint job. And you do get that very, very nice retro packaging. So I don't feel bad about putting $20 down on this guy. I think he's a worthwhile purchase. And anybody that's looking for a more definitive G1 Chrome Dome that really didn't like the TR take on it, and they either couldn't afford or just didn't like the Takara Legends version... I think this is the Chrome Dome for you. I think you'll be very happy with this toy. And if you were going to pick up any of the Retro Headmasters, 
as a you know G1 completionist, this is your guy right here. It also helps if you missed out on the old Titans Return toys because now you get a second chance to own some version of these molds. And you know, even though they all have their pros and cons, they're all solid enough to where I think you'll be pretty satisfied with them. But anyway, that is just my take on the new Chrome Dome. Now I want to know what you guys think. Do you see this as a worthwhile update to a toy that was released, you know, several years ago? If you already have an old version of this, do you see this worth picking up again? Or are you satisfied with what you have? Do you not like this new take for some reason? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Transformers Retro Headmaster Chrome Dome. And with all that said, I will see you next time.